I'm just an average guy, but I have above average dreams. And my dreams is to make the Lower Night Ward catch up with the rest of the city. My name is Bernal Cotlin. I'm a lifetime resident and also a veteran of the United States Army. I was an MP. Um, I was born and raised here in the Night Ward. Um, I love, I love what I do. I never in a thousand years thought I'd be doing a grocery store. <laughs> but this is where uh, my life journey has taken me. And I have no regrets, none at all. Because when people turn on the TV, they see Bourbon Street, they see the French Cross, they see the Superdome, they see the Saints. And they think New Orleans is complete, but it's not. Because the Lord Night Board is a part of New Orleans. Well, what brought all this about is, right after Katrina, uh, let's, let's, start, let's start with this way. Before Katrina, I had 42 neighbors on one block. After Katrina, I was the only person, I was the first and the only person in the entire city block didn't have any neighbors at all. And fast forward, I had one neighbor finally showed up, Miss Emanuel, she was an elderly lady. And it didn't hit me until I seen her drive up in a taxi cab one day, and she's taking her groceries out of the back of the, the cab. And um, I asked her what, what was going on. She said, Bernal, you didn't know we didn't have any grocery stores. So I jumped in my car and I drove up and down the lower night board and turned to find out we didn't have any businesses at all. No grocery stores, no barber shops, didn't have anything. That's crazy, that's crazy. So I started calling up all of the big box stores, asking them why they are not coming to the Lord Night Ward to open up a business. And they said because of the, the number of people that they had here, they're not gonna come to the Lord Night Ward. That's when I found out the terminology food desert. That's crazy because somebody has to do something to help the people here. The closest store is Walmart, and that's in the next city. You have to catch three city buses just to get a loaf of bread or a gallon of milk. That's an undue hardship. So I had a nice piece of change saved up. And I said, if in my world you're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution. The problem everybody knew. The solution is there's no grocery stores, build one. And that's what made me start on sale. My first business was the barber shop. If I'd have started with the grocery store first, I wouldn't have made it. So I opened up the first Barber Beauty Salon. This window right here behind me, this was the grocery store window. Everything went out this one little bitty window. Milk, eggs, bread, cheese, everything went out that one little bitty window. I saved all my money up from that little bitty window. It was finally opened up to open the first doors here to the actual grocery store. Uh, we brought the next business as the laundromat. This gentleman came one day, he uh, had a big old huge garbage bag. He bought two things. He bought some liquid uh, dark, uh, detergent and a Coca-Cola. He picked that bag up and walked across the street to the bus stop. I walked over behind him and introduced myself and asked him where he was going. He opened it up. It was full of dirty clothes. He told me he didn't have a laundry room. He didn't have a washing machine and dryer. So I shook his hand. I said, you give me a little bit and I'm gonna open up a laundry room. So that's my next venture, is open up the first laundry room in my neighborhood. Uh, we finally about to get a school here. 10 years later, it's, it's, I'm sorry to get all emotional, but I get, I get so angry when I know how the, the people are suffering here. Uh, I bought another building. And what I'm gonna do with this building here, I'm gonna open up the first internet cafe. So to give these kids a place where they can come and get free Wi-Fi and you know, some donuts and coffee, just hang out and things. The school is supposed to be open up in May. And as I have my fingers crossed, I hope, hope it does open. Uh, after this year, I'm going to start some more businesses. I'm going to start building houses because there's such a need here in the Lower Night Ward. There's, there's a tremendous need here and, and nobody else is doing it. I have Wi-Fi here. And the kids come here every day. Burnell, can you open up uh, a Chuck E. Cheese? Can you open up a skate? People ask me for all kinds of things. And there's, there's nowhere for them to hang out here. So I decided to open up an internet cafe. You know, give the kids a place where when they get out of school, they can walk over here, pop open their laptops, and, and have a place they can hang out and things. So they won't get any trouble. So uh, that's my next vision. <laughs> my, my life has made a 180 degree turnaround. I've literally had people from all over the world 
to come and do an interview. I have people from Japan, Germany, Australia, uh, Berlin, Iraq, from all over the world that came here to do interviews. It's, it's phenomenal. Uh, Japan had came here because they have a lot of tsunamis there. And they came here because they said a lot of small businessmen are afraid to rebuild because they're afraid of another tsunami. So the reporter asked me, how did I feel about another Katrina? He said, would you, would you, aren't you afraid of another Katrina? I said, what if Katrina never comes again? Then he asked, well, what if you build a business and they don't come? I said, what if I build a business and they do come? So the light bulb went off in his head, oh, he's a positive person. My story made number one in Japanese TV. And it's, it's all over the world. All, all the major news outlets, everybody been here. I see a second floor on here. I see several other businesses around. I want to open up a, a daycare center. I want to put a movie theater back here. I want to continue with my internet cafe. There's so much that still needs to be done. We're, we're in dire straits here in the Lower Night Ward. There's so many people here. There are a lot of people who even want to come back home, but there's not enough businesses. So I'm going to keep on going. But I see the Lower Night Ward 10 years from now, thriving just like it was before Katrina and that's my dream that's my vision